Welcome back guys. This is Ashwin here. In this video, we are going to see how to perform data augmentation for image data. So the data augmentation technique will be very helpful if you have uh, less number of sample images. Uh, if you want to train a neural network means uh, you really need a large amount of data set. So if you don't have it means data augmentation is the go to technique. Uh, it will also avoid overfitting your model. So this will be like a useful uh, technique for you. And uh, to avoid overfitting, you can also use some regularization technique in the model or you can uh, use some uh, dropout layers. But this is the best technique uh, you can use to avoid uh, overfitting. Now for this uh, example, I'm going to use uh, MNIST dataset and uh, show you how it's augmenting the data based on your uh, scenario. So first let's load the data. For that, I have to import a few modules. So first I have to import from uh, tensorflow dot keras dot datasets datasets import MNIST. So from this I can easily load the MNIST data from matplotlib dot pyplot. Okay, I think this will be import import matplotlib dot pyplot as plot and after that I have to import few more uh, tensorflow libraries uh, for doing the augmentation and uh, other purposes so from tensorflow dot keras dot preprocessing dot image import image data generator so this is the module and apart from that we can also load numpy as np and uh, yeah i think uh, warnings also will be helpful port warnings next dot filter warnings ignore okay these are the modules uh, we have to use for this uh, example now let's load the data set quickly so the MNIST data will have both uh, train and test. So I'm gonna load both of them. So X train and Y train is the training data. Uh, X test and uh, Y test will be the testing data. So I'll be MNIST dot load data. So this will load the data. And uh, you can see the shape. So we have like 60,000 uh, samples for training and we can also see for testing. So 60,000 samples for training and 10,000 samples for testing. And we have like 28 cross 28 uh, dimension uh, images. So all the values are in like uh, pixels. So we can able to uh, uh, train the model using that. So before doing that, we have to uh, reshape uh, this uh, current dimensions so it is a grayscale image so we'll be having a so we'll be adding additional one dimension uh, for the grayscale so reshape the data so this is we have to use it for the x train and x test so x train equals x train dot reshape of and we have to specify the shape First is the number of samples that you can get it easily by using the shape of zero. As you can able to see the first index is the number of samples and second index is the uh, height and width. And lastly, we will be having that uh, channel. So if you have a RGB image means we'll be having uh, three. For uh, grayscale, it will be one. Now similarly, we have to do the same for uh, test data just paste this and this will be done and we have to change the uh, type as well so change the type to float so that will be x train equals x train dot as type float 32 and yes, do the same for the test data. Oh, 
okay that's pretty much it now let's see the shape maybe i can use this name snippet again so now you can able to see uh, we have added uh, one more uh, dimension that is the number of channels in the image so this is just like a basic pre-processing i have done now let's dive into the uh, image data generator so i will create a data generator data generator equals image data generator so for now i'm just uh, leaving it empty and uh, later i will uh, use some parameters and see how the uh, function augments the image so after that i will uh, create la like a batches configure um, batch for the images now for x batch and uh, y batch in data generator dot flow so you can uh, use data frame or uh, directory so currently i have loaded everything into a variable so i can use like flow function if you are using data frame means you can use flow from data frame uh, or if you are uh, loading it from the directory means you can use flow from directory uh, so currently i'm just using uh, the variables so you can just pass the x train and uh, y train specify the batch size batch size equals 16 i'm gonna display like 16 images for this example so for a, a single batch it will uh, fetch 16 images now create a grid of four cross four images now fig comma axis equals i'm gonna create like a subplots we already done this in many videos in order to see all the images like in a single plot so we have like 16 images so four cross four and i will specify the fig size as 8 comma 8 should be fine if you want you can adjust this later so this is just for uh, uh, setting that uh, subplots now we will be uh, plotting the images in that subplot so for i n range of 4 this is the row for i n range of j in range of 4 this is the column now axis of i of j this is just like a matrix so i will first uh, disable the axis so it will uh, show some numbers i'll just uh, remove that and axis of i of j dot i am show of now i am going to uh, display the images so x underscore batch of i have to like uh, specify the number because it will be like a list of uh, images so i multiplies 4 plus j so this will just uh, uh, go through all the 16 images so i think uh, this logic you already know i'm just uh, using uh, i as the row and uh, uh, j as the column so for uh, first row i will be zero so j will be incremented like four times and after that um, uh, it will i will be one so it will be uh, displaying images in the second row and it will keep on going and for this i'm gonna reshape it again so reshape of 28 comma 28 and we have to set color map so here uh, we are using grayscale image so plot dot get cmap i am going to specify gray now that's done after doing all these things i'll just say plot dot show and break the loop or else it will just try to load all the images so we will just need like a single iteration now this is done let's run this okay now you can able to clearly see all the images so i'm just displaying 16 images here without doing any kind of augmentation now just copy the same thing now here we will perform the data augmentation data augmentation
okay in the image data generator you just uh, specify the uh, options whatever uh, you like so there are like multiple functionalities uh, you can use uh, first one is rescale it will just normalize the images so that will be like one dot uh, divided by 255 so this will just normalize the images and it will be in the range of uh, 0 to 1 so this will be done for uh, all the images and after that you can uh, do some rotation so rotation range equals uh, I'll just say 30 and after that you can have a zoom zoom range I'll just specify like uh, 20% chance and uh, shear range uh, it will just uh, uh, slightly bend the uh, images for this I will also set it as like 0 0.2 apart from that we can do some flipping there is like horizontal flip and uh, vertical flip as well so you can specify it as true but uh, it's better to specify it as like a probability you can set it as like um, there will be like a 50% chance that the image will be uh, flipped horizontally like that you can specify the probabilities so all these things are like uh, probabilities this is like the rotation angle and I think for this problem we don't have to do uh, like horizontal flip or vertical flip as this is like a number um, other than that these uh, cases vary uh, let me just uh, show you so it usually displays some suggestions yeah so here you can able to see there is like brightness range uh, fill mode channel shift range height shift range you can specify the height or uh, width uh, there is like is it ca whitening and other than that i don't think uh, much else these are like a common module so you will be uh, uh, using so you can also check up the uh, module documentation if you want to uh, uh, specify more number of parameters here but these are like um, uh, basic things you will be uh, using so depends on the scenario you can specify the horizontal flip or vertical uh, flip uh, height shift range or width shift range maybe for this I can specify the height shift range so height shift range it will be like around 0.2 okay I think uh, this number of uh, parameters is enough so I'll just uh, run this okay I think uh, we have to specify shuffle equals false so it won't shuffle the data okay these are the data we have and again here also we will say shuffle equals false by default it's true so uh, you can able to see the original data now now see the uh, shifted data so here phi is like uh, sh uh, shifted in the height a little as you can able to see uh, even four is like rotated a little one is also like rotated a little and somewhat zoomed um, shear means it will just uh, slightly tilt it so here nine is also changed one is also changed see the height is like uh, uh, gone up like that uh, there are uh, some augmentation has been done on this data so each time based on the probability uh, it will uh, randomly uh, uh, zoom it or uh, some uh, crop the images uh, there are like various techniques you can able to use so this is how you can able to get like new images or uh, new samples from the existing data so this will be very helpful if you have low number of, um, this will be very helpful if you have less number of uh, samples so I think that's pretty much it guys so this is how you can perform data augmentation for image data uh, I will continue the uh, flow uh, from here in order to uh, cover transfer learning and uh, learning rate scheduler in the upcoming videos apart from that if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe the channel for future videos stay tuned for the next video